favorite ones, everyone. I am here for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 6, Episode 8. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, you a family member, you one of my peoples, welcome back. Y'all, I don't know what this piece of hair in the back is doing, but it is really working my nerves. I caught myself twisting my, my mini twists at the ends because I didn't like how they was looking. And this one piece back here is... It's just trying to do its own thing and it's working my nerve. I'm taking it down tomorrow, but I think I'm getting so much better with my mini twists. Because I think I was like not twisting the right way. Now, this ain't got nothing to do with the show. We just going to talk about my mini twists right quick. So, I was just like, when I would do my mini twists, I was using the comb. And I was like, it don't look right. It looks better when I'm just like freehanded, just grabbing some pieces. And I realized like, even though when I start off with them being mini, and I put a little water on them. They plump up and they be like the perfect size. But I don't know what it is with my hair. That I have to curl the ends. Because when I don't they look so just raggedy. It's like my ends are straight. And I want them to curl but they won't. And when I do put like a little curler on the end. A little flexi rod or something like that. They don't curl like I want to. Like this one right here is just being long and I don't want to say raggedy because it ain't raggedy. It's just, it ain't doing what I want it to do. Now, I didn't talk enough about my hair. But if y'all keep on seeing me messing with this hair in the back, y'all just don't even act like, just act like I'm not even doing it. So, let's get on. Um, We're going to talk about K. Michelle and Tone and her concerns about Tone being her surrogate. Now, y'all already know Tone and her boyfriend, they went on, I think YouTube, it was, and announced to the world that she would be a surrogate for a celebrity. And I was like, I don't know if she was doing that so she can get views or what have you, but I'm like, that, I mean, yes, for, granted, K. Michelle, she had a whole camera crew and people that are saying that this is going to be my surrogate. But, like, it's not official. Like, you not the surrogate yet. We, we still in talks, you know. You know, her eggs is not inside your womb. Money has not been transferred to your hand. So, at this point, you're not really her surrogate. We in talks of being a surrogate. But K. Michelle's issue is the boyfriend. Now, this man had already came. He wanted to get a contract. I don't know what he's saying in your ear. I'm not really comfortable, comfortable with us talking every day. I'm just not cool with that. Now, CK... Had you gone through a lawyer and through a surrogacy, a surrogacy agency, you wouldn't have to deal with that. You would just see this person when it's time for the doctors and when it's time to have this baby. And that's it. You wouldn't have her calling you, hey girl, what's up? Yeah, my kids want to say hi. They so happy they're going to be big sisters even though they're not going to be big sisters. Now, granted, you thought she was going to be a good surrogate because she's a good, you know, with mama to her kids. But these is her kids. Not saying that she wasn't going to be a good surrogate, but you saying she was, you was leaking her being a good surrogate because she's a good mama to her kids. And it's like... It's not really like that. So, you can see, like, Kay, she, like, kind of stepping back and, like, the lawyer in her ear, like, dude, he ain't about to write. And she let Tony know that I'm not giving your man no money. Now, whatever money you get, if we go through this circuit and you give him a couple of dollars, that's on you. But it's not going to come from me. All right? Just letting her know that. Now, Apple... She's going through it after her surgery, rightfully so. She didn't got cut into and she didn't got her skin expanded to put these implants in it. Then on top of that, she went to a strip mall, got her surgery done while being wide awake, and it looked like she was sitting up during the process. Now, I forgot to mention this last week when, who was that, Mr. Ray and her play sister went back there after she was having surgery. They just had her sitting propped all the way up. Now, a few times that I've had surgeries, I always woke up, well, I was, you know, put under because I was having surgery. But the one time that I do remember being awake before I got to the recovery area, I was being wheeled out of the room. But I was laying down at the time. And I still didn't get an explanation as to why she was sitting fully up while she was coming out of the surgery. I still don't know how surgery went on with her being awake. Like, did, was there an anesthesiologist there? Or was it, we had an anesthesiologist, but we don't have the money money to, you know, have the little the mask they put on you to put you under or was it like we had some lidocaine shots and we just you know gave you a couple of shots around the breast area so we can cut you when you don't feel things but whatever went on at this strip mall while she was awake 
she feeling it. She like I been wanting to have some bigger girls for the longest time, but she didn't know it was gonna be this painful. I'm like, it is surgery. You are being cut on. Your skin is expanded because of these breast implants. And now her place is got to go to the store to get her some medication. Now she's talking about some Tylenol. I was like, the doctor did not prescribe you anything stronger. Now, your girl can't take anything stronger. Give me an extra, extra strength Tylenol. I, they've given me the stronger stuff after my surgery. And I felt horrible. I was like, I was so nauseated that I wasn't thinking about the pain I was having in my stomach. I was just thinking about, I don't want to throw up. So, no, miss me with all that pain and all that stuff. But she's realized, you know, her mom then got in contact with her because she was on social media talking about the surgery she had at the stream while she was awake. So her mom wanted to get in contact with her, with her. But she hasn't talked to her mom in a year because her mama likes to talk reckless. Like, her mom will talk about her like she's a stranger on the street trying to steal her man. Like, things you don't say to your daughter Apple's mama likes to say to her and like she just not like she's not having that they the same pe they the same person they have the same addictive personalities it's just that apple likes to drink and the mama does did or does drugs and apple she realizes that she has a problem i was like that is good you know the first step to recovery is is realizing and you know that you have a problem and hopefully that i think now i'm paraphrasing on that but like admitting that you have a problem i think that's what it is now don't call me on that y'all but yeah she she knows that she has an issue with alcohol and you know at this point she has her play sister and you know she's not really cool cool with her family for real for real so she's not really trying to talk to them right now she just wants to be not in pain at this current moment well in that current moment now y'all I believe I've said before that I was done talking about A1, Lyrica, and Britney. And I was going to stick to that. But this whole little scene and Lyrica G's little listening event she had going on, I was confused. I was like, was this taped, you know, multiple times? Because it, it seemed like bad acting on Britney's part. Because, first of all, she shows up and she's in her confessional being shady, talking about some gas. Lyrica G, she can sing. How come she didn't pass none of that down to Lil Lyrica? I'm like, you all her being shady, but at the same, and then... Like the next sentence, you talking about something you want to let bygones be bygones. You want to get some things cleared up between you, but you was just shading her, talking about her singing. Now, what I heard of your singing at that little showcase, you you wasn't going to be out here selling out arenas yourself. So I don't know what that got to do with anything, but she was being shady. And she shows up, and Lyric was like, What you, basically, girl, what you doing here? Mama, yeah, this Brittany. We we got into it because she don't like whatever my friend's name is. Mm -hmm. And Big Lyrica, she was already having this look of something about you I don't like. That's what I got. The next thing no, that I know, that Pam showed up. And I want to call her mama that because that's what Forex Wise calls her. Y'all, I'm telling y'all. These people that I'll be watching on reviews like Forrest Rocks, Bonnie Blue, and James Caldwell, when they give uh, specific people names, I and Alexander Rogers, I try to go by the name that they're going by on the show, but in my head, they will be the names that these people have given this person. And I just wanted to say mama dad, but that's what, that's what Forrest Rocks calls her. But Pam shows up and it looked like a straw set a straw curl set but i wasn't for sure if it was just all down or if it, the front had a ponytail on top i was confused now y'all this is what the third or fourth season that lyrica a1 big lyrica and pam have been on here now if we go on by, you know, reality show mamas or reality show people, your second season sh should be better than the first. Like, they always come on the first season because, you know, they didn't have, no, they didn't have money like that. They got a little fame, was doing a little extra stuff, you know, making appearances because people like them, see them on the show. They got a little bit of money. And they getting their hair right. And they getting their wardrobe right. Mama D from... Loving Hip Hop Atlanta 
is a example of that how she was looking kind of rough the first season then she came back you know better wigs and better clothes I don't know why Lyrica G and Pam did not get this memo because Pam she is rocking this this straw curl set where I couldn't tell if it was a ponytail on top or was that just the way the, mid, the wig was made she had on this camouflage off the shoulder type of shirt with what she's been rocking lately this anchor necklace this too big for her lip piercing that she got going on right there just doing the absolute most she's showing up to support Lyrica G in what world does this happen I was wondering even Lyrica and Big Lyrica G, Lyrica G was looking like what is going on here but she feels they both baby ocean's grandma and you know they need to get along out here so she takes you know Lyrica G off to the side and gives her they, they fit to go get a drink I was so confused about that now I already told y'all that I wasn't going to talk about them. But that scene made me talk about them. This whole episode made me want to talk about them. Even though I didn't want to. Now, Zell, he finally shows up. And him and Brittany get into it. Because Brittany kicked per he and Paris out of the event she's having. And since Paris is his best good friend. That basically means they're married. So he has to defend her. I'm like, y'all friends. So that's mean y'all practically married. Those two things don't go hand in hand. But whatever. They get the fuss and they get the fighting. And then he calls her a zebra. For, I guess because she had on black and white. And like she leaves up out the room. And I was like, first of all, you were supposed to be here for Lyrica G and her performance. And Lyrica G didn't have her performance in off stage. Now, if she come back on stage, I don't know what they didn't say. But you were supposed that was the whole reason she was showing up to support Lyrica G and you late. Child. Now y'all, I'm understanding a little bit more about Apple and her abandonment issues because she went through a lot as a child. Like when she was three years old, she was a take she was taken away from her mom, her and her I don't I think it's her older sister. They were taken away from their mom and had to go live with grandma. They lived with grandma for some period of time. And then grandma was like, okay, look here. You and your sister, y'all gonna go into foster care. And your triple sisters, we going somewhere else. I'm keeping the triple sisters with me. And y'all gonna go into foster care. And just check them to do something went on about her business. I shouldn't say check them to do something. Like, she left them to be in foster care while she took the other siblings. And that, it like, makes me mad when I hear st stories like that. Like... You was giving up for adoption and your mama kept other kids or had kids after you was uh, like, I'm going to keep these kids. Or some went into the foster care system and some didn't go into the foster care system. I was like, I was I was hurting for um, Apple. But, you know, um, her mom says that she had warrants and she didn't have a place to live. And it may be that the grandma's thought the child would have a little bit more of me and y'all and she didn't want to handle y'all but I was like wasn't they little so how bad was that like they were probably acting out because they mama wasn't around daddy wasn't around of course they're gonna act out like mama just up and left we gotta live with you and you probably showing favoritism to the triplet sisters and not us and that's gonna cause a child to act out they children know things People act like kids don't be knowing what's going on. Kids be knowing what's going on. They can feel that, okay, grandma, she treating y'all for better than us. And, like, when Apple was pregnant, she was living in a hotel. And her older sister was, like, giving her money to live and eat. And she was doing a little bit of everything so she could survive out here. She had it rough, y'all. <sighs> y'all. So, Lyrica, she is moving all of her stuff and Baby Ocean stuff out of the house because she got a DM from some girl saying that A1 met some random girl on the plane and they went back to his hotel room and they had sex. And the girl couldn't wait to go run tell that to her best good friends that she had sex with A1. Now, y'all, I'm telling y'all, they these two are turning into Kurt and Rashida and it's like... It... It's making me mad. I was already mad with the theatrics that Kirk and Rashida go through. And, 
each and every season on Love and Hip Hop. It's like the Love and Hip Hop that like they're trying to outdo what they was doing last season. Like last season, Lyrica she was out here sleeping with Safari, and I was like, every woman that a one walks across is just throwing theirself at him, and like, what is he to do, and all this other stuff, like. They are really trying to play this that A1 just got women just throwing themselves at him. Well, later on, he come home because he got a mess. He out of town on business. His words, not mine. Well, I guess his words ain't mine. He said this. That he got a notification from his phone from the security system. And he seen Lyrica throwing, you know, covers and not sheets and stuff over the camera. And how the movers was moving the stuff out. And... How some girl, they was cool on a plane, but she went out here to tell everybody that she was sleeping with A1 and all the other stuff. That he wasn't doing none of the things. I'm like, y'all are Kirk and Rashida 2.0. And I'm going to try not to talk about it anymore. But I know there's going to be something else that is like even more theatrical that I'm going to have to talk about it. Now, let's move over to April and Fizz. Another a pair that I'm getting tired of talking about because they want us to believe they want like we're fools and not knowing that these two were sleeping together or are in a relationship or whatever they got going on. So before we get into all that, let me just talk briefly about April out of her mouth saying that basically she was going to prostitute for a tattoo. So you you gonna give up the goodies, your goodies. To get a free tattoo, and you said this in on camera. Like, what is your man Fizz going to think about this? April, you giving trying to give up the you know your goodies for a free tattoo. Like, really, th this what we doing out here? Fizz gonna be mad at you. Yeah, he gonna be mad at you. So y'all, I'm just glad that somebody close to April and Fizz. Or telling him like it is. Because Willie. Y'all remember Willie. He from day 26. And his wife. Chandra. You remember. She couldn't wait to hop skip. And jump back on a, a stripper pole. When they wasn't making enough money. Them two. He's like. So. His whole thing is. Okay Fizz. You and Amarian. We're in a group. Y'all seem like best friends. He has two kids with April. And you and April seem like y'all got something going on. Don't y'all think that deserves an explanation of some sorts? And I'm like, thank you. Even Chris and her confession was like, y'all, I don't even know why y'all playing tomorrow. We know that y'all are a relationship. We know that y'all are sleeping together. Why don't you just come out with it? I'm like, yes. Why don't you just come out and just like, we in a relationship? Simple as that. We bonded as being friends and now we in love. Or in like or in lust or whatever y'all got going on. Just go ahead and admit it not that oh we are the best good friends. We we're like Forrest and Jenny when she didn't want him, she just needed a friend and pretend and I ain't even going into the Forrest Scott movie, but we are the best of friends and he was there for me and held me down when I needed him. April's mom was so happy that Fizz was there for April when she was at her lowest, when she was down to a mere hundred pounds, drinking herself into stupors. Not really, they're not saying that she wasn't there for the kids, but like if you was losing that much weight and you was already drinking, I'm just going to assume that you wasn't being the best of mothers to your kids. But he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, she needed somebody when she was at her worst. And, you know, I was there for her because that's what friends do. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, friends are there for you when you need them. But how come, it was, how come like, season one of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, you was making Moniece to be out some deadbeat mama because she needed you to step up when she was going through her issues with her mental health. How is it that you are here for, Mo for, here for April you need some rest let me go ahead and take the kids to the park you go ahead and rest girl get your strength up you are a woman you are strong but you are always being so nasty to the mother of your child and i don't get it i was just sitting there looking at everybody how they was just praising fizz for being there for april when she needed somebody to be there for her but he sits there and treats Moniece like this and whoever he's with at the time let them treat Moniece like any and everything 
Moniz clearly has mental issues. And when she needed the father of her child there, he was making it seem like she was just being a deadbeat mama when that was never the case. And I'm just looking at Fizz and I'm looking at April just out of the side of the eyes. Mm -mm -mm. But I, I'm paraphrasing on some of the things that he said. I'm like, Fizz, you ain't, you ain't nothing at this point. I mean, you already wouldn't know because y'all sitting up here lying to our faces about y'all relationship. And I'm tired of talking about it. But I know they're going to say something else that's going to make me talk about it again. So y'all... That was basically the gist. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. It's free all day, every day, free 99. Make sure them notifications are on so when my beautiful face puts up a video, you can click on it, you can like it, you can share it with your people. If you're returning, you a family member, and you one of my peoples, welcome back. Y'all know what to do. Tell your people to tell their people to come over and be one of my peoples. Now, this is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.